Excuse me, little dog. Hi, guys. It is another cold, gray, miserable midwinter day here in early October. That would be Monday, October 9th, 2023. And uh, I just kind of figured out yesterday that this is some sort of holiday weekend. Uh, one of the busiest weekends of my entire year. I still have two more sets of people coming to stay here uh, in, in this cold, miserable hellhole known as Bugs in a Jar Farm. So hopefully we won't get interrupted. So I guess what it today, uh, depending on which side of the human supremacy fence you're on, uh, are you on the honky side of the human supremacy fence or are you on the noble savage side of the human supremacy fence? So while all these human supremacists fight over who is the, uh, the most noble and the most evil, uh, <laughs> but... I, you know, I think October 12th, wasn't it actually? Uh, it was October 12th when uh, one of the biggest genocidal maniacs uh, in the history of humanity uh, made history. So I'm going to try to remember to do this rant actually on October 12th uh, when I'm driving back from Vermont. So... Try to remind me that I was going to do my broken record human supremacy day rant on Thursday. But uh, it is an interesting, uh, quite, an, quite an interesting stack of uh, stories of the collapse of everything here in the Monday morning headlines. Of course, it goes without saying the, uh, you know, the biggest story on the planet is this latest little kerfuffle by a bunch of war criminals going on over there in the Middle East. I, I think we've had little war criminal kerfuffles going over there in the Middle East for, what, at, at least 2,000 years since the pre Prince of Peace was born. Uh, guys, I am absolutely not going to wade in to uh, this little kerfuffle any more than I talk about that little kerfuffle, you know, over there in Ukraine. It's a bunch of goddamn war criminals. There, there is no way you're going to read anything in the mainstream or the alternative media about uh, this little newest kerfuffle uh, that, that is going to change your opinion. Uh, pick your propaganda. Every bit of it is propaganda with, with somebody with an agenda. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say one thing about this little kerfuffle uh, and hopefully not mention it again. You know, the, the Gaza Strip, the Gaza Strip is, is one, you know, if I had to imagine the poster child of the collapse of everything, if, if you want to see a monument to human overshoot, it is the Gaza Strip, one of the most uh, disgusting shithole. Is it a country or what the hell is the Gaza Strip? Uh, it, 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 you, when Alex, when Alan Wiseman, the the uh, author of uh, Countdown, which was a, a book about overshoot, and the author of The World Without Us. I've had the pleasure of interviewing Alan on Collapse Chronicles. You can find that interview here. But when Alan Wiseman, you know, was writing his book Countdown, he went around the planet to find the 
most glaring example of what human overshoot looks like as a snapshot of the biggest story on the planet, which is human overshoot. Uh, what? It, and, you know, that, that book, 10 years or more than 10, how long ago was that book written? But anyway, so uh, I just went and Googled uh, population density in the Gaza Strip. The Gaza Strip covers an area approximately 10 kilometers wide and 41 kilometers long. So anyway, we're talking in, in miles, that's about six and a half miles wide, 25 miles long. 25 miles by six and a half miles. How many people do you think live there? If your answer was uh, over two million people uh, live in that hell hole, that festering hell hole, which means an average of around 5,500 people per square kilometer. Uh, don't know what that means per square mile. So, you know, a kilometer is like a little less than two-thirds of a mile. 5,500. Uh, and, and I just always assumed, that, oh, and uh, by comparison, in Israel, next door, the average population density is around 400 people uh, per square kilometer, so less than one-tenth the population in the completely overpopulated, overshot country of... Uh, 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 of the shithole country of Israel. Uh, but I think that, uh, that the Gaza Strip, uh, doesn't Israel control virtually 100%? Isn't the Gaza Strip, aren't those guys 100% percent dependent on Israel for their electricity uh, and, and, uh, and and their fuel and their food. Uh, <clears throat> talking about uh, biting the hand that feeds you, so I guess that Israel is doing exactly what I would be doing today. And, and, and they're saying, fuck you. Uh, excuse my French. And they have turned off the electricity, uh, the fossil fuels, and the food to the Gaza Strip, which is exactly uh, what they should be doing. But I'm going to shut up now, and it's going to be interesting to see how uh, laying siege to over uh, two million people who should never have been born, what it's going to look like. What, what it's going to look like it is a snapshot uh, on, on what this planet is going to look like. You're going to see what happens when uh, a, a handful of, uh, of people have 100% control over your electricity, your fossil fuels, and your food. It, it, it's a... Uh, th this will... Uh, but I will be trying to keep my mouth shut uh, I just wanted to touch base on, I, okay, I see Michael Mann, Michael Mann has a new book out, and Rolling Stone is rolling out the red carpet to, uh, Michael Mann, you know, holding up Michael Mann as a big, uh, climate hero, I, I think The Guardian last week. Uh, no, I'm sorry, that was Bill McKibben that the Guardian was celebrating. So this is uh, Rolling Stone cheering on Michael Mann's new book, Our Fragile Moment, Lessons from Earth's Past to Combat Climate 
crisis. Uh, but I, I don't know if I'm going to get into this, but um, what he's talking about, this is a long excerpt from the book where our hero, Michael Mann, the anti-doomer hopium addict, Michael Mann is talking in this about the Paleocene Ecocene Thermal Maximum of 56 million years ago and uh, comparing that uh, what happened 56 million years ago to what is probably happening uh, right now you know because of all those doomers it's the doomers fault that we are repeating the PETM uh, so Bloomberg, this is another good one, uh, but, but they don't add a lot after this. the the uh, title, Zombie Viruses Are Waking Up After 50,000 Years As Planet Warms. This is a long, involved piece in Bloomberg. Uh, you know, talking about not so much the methane and carbon bomb and the thawing permafrost, but it's the, uh, it's the virus, uh, bomb as hundreds, thousands, maybe millions of, uh, nobody has any clue, uh, how many viruses are getting ready to uh, be unleashed on this planet. Uh, any one of which could make Corona Panic uh, look, look like a bad hair day. Nobody knows. Maybe we'll just dodge the bullet. Uh, but you better believe the virus bomb going off and the permafrost. Uh, you're going to be reading a lot more about that in the near future. Hopefully, all we can hope is that finally a, a virus uh, with a 100% fatality rate uh, that we manage, you know, through the burning of fossil fuels to unleash a virus to wipe humans off the face of the earth. Of course, the problem is, will these viruses, uh, you know, like the, the anthrax that thawed out, killing all those reindeer, uh, it's, uh, although you would never know it by reading this human-centric story, that of course these viruses, uh, despite what you're going to read about them, they also affect uh, all of our fellow earthlings. And good God. Uh, but anyway, we're going to uh, pick up on this story from the French news service. Uh, OPEC sees no peak in global oil demand on the horizon. And I have to say that I agree 100% with OPEC. Uh, so, what's this all about? <laughs> Despite mounting efforts to limit climate change, there you go, mounting efforts to limit climate change, the OPEC oil cartel said today it expects demand for crude to continue to grow for the next two decades. In its 2023 annual report, the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries forecasts demand for crude to reach 116 million barrels per day by the year 2045 under its main scenario, you know, looking at the different scenarios. This is a 16.5% increase uh, from the 99.4 million 
million barrels per day we burned last year. Uh, that is an increase of, uh, well, oh, that is an increase of 6 million barrels per day from its estimate last year. So last year, I guess they were saying uh, that they were expecting it to go to 110 million barrels per day, but after looking at what's going on on the planet, they've raised the estimate for 2045 by 6 million barrels per day. And uh, OPEC's chief, Haitham al Gais said oil demand has, quote, the potential to be even higher. What is clear is that the world will continue to need more energy in the decades to come. Close quote. Uh, he emphasized in the forward to the report, which comes just eight weeks before the next UN climate conference, COP out 28 in Dubai. Uh, at that conference, dozens of countries will try to impose the adoption of the objective of an end to the use of fossil fuels like oil, natural gas, and coal. And then, of course, they put a fossil fuel executive uh, at the head of it. Uh, you know, that, that they, they put the number one fox they could find on the planet to guard the hen house, and he's already catching shit from uh, for saying, well, we'll get to this in, in, in a minute. Uh, I agree 100% with OPEC, and, and I agree with this planet-eating fossil fuel uh, executive, but we'll get to this in a minute. Uh, back to OPEC. According to OPEC, whose 13 member states include Saudi Arabia, the Gulf states, and Venezuela, oil demand will be driven by emerging and developing nations with India, India in pole position. Yeah, that uh, obviously, you know, the the number one most populated country on the planet now uh, is going to drive the increase in demand of fossil fuels. This is no shit Sherlock. Uh, there, there's, what, four times as many people in India and the U.S., and I think right now each one of them are using probably about one-fourth the fossil fuels that each one of us are, uh, are, are, are using. Uh, in order to meet... Oh, okay. Uh, now, meanwhile, uh, OPEC sees oil demand in the OECD Club of Advanced Economies declining starting in 2025, but for every one step forward that, uh, that the, the big boys make uh, it, it is going to be six steps backwards uh, over there in India, and, uh, you know, we're talking Asia and, to a lesser degree, Africa, I'm sure. Uh, so in order to meet this demand, OPEC says additional investment in fossil fuel production will be needed, putting the figure at 14 
trillion dollars by 2045 or roughly 610 billion dollars per year now obviously OPEC uh, is looking for oil uh, investors uh, I have uh, always said if you want to uh, it, it, you know to make money off the collapse of a planet, you can stick with oil or you can go over there to lithium and cobalt and copper. Uh, you have so many choices now to uh, make a pile of money off the collapse of a planet. Um, said Al Geis, a Kuwaiti oil executive, Quote, it is vital that these investments are made. It is beneficial for both producers and consumers. Calls to stop investments in new oil projects, can you say just stop oil, are misguided and could lead to energy and economic chaos. He warned in criticism aimed at the International Energy Agency, the IEA, which in 2021 uh, surprised the world and shocked oil exporting nations by calling for a halt in new investment in fossil fuel production to attain carbon neutrality by 2050. The IEA, which is part of the OECD, I wish we're supposed to know, I'm having a senior moment with the OECD. Good God, you know, at some point they're supposed to say what the OECD, uh, led by the United States, is the Organization for Economic cooperation and development. So the IEA is part of the OECD, uh, I guess, in a little kerfuffle with OPEC. Uh, the IEA recently confirmed that it sees no new fossil fuel projects as necessary in the long term, yes, last month the, I, it, the IEA forecast for the very first time that world demand for oil, gas, and coal will peak this decade and drop by 24 million barrels a day to what's that, about 75 million barrels a day by 2050 due to spectacular growth of cleaner energy technologies and electric cars, which of course are all 100% dependent on fossil fuel inputs. Uh, meanwhile, OPEC says, and I agree 100%, says it takes a quote, realistic approach in its main forecast scenario, uh, quoting the report, what is clear, what is clear that a sustainable energy and economic future, well, of, of course I'm not agreeing with their word sustainable, what is clear is that an unsustainable energy and economic future for all requires all energy sources, all relevant technologies, unprecedented investment and collaboration, and with energy security, economic development, and reducing emissions going hand in hand. Oh yeah, there is no single solution to meet growing global energy needs.
there you go. Uh, that is uh, the, the best quote I've read. You, you, you know, it, it is the frying pan and the fire. It is the frying pan and the fire. Uh, one more time, it is no longer a choice between dying in the uh, frying pan of fossil fuels or the fire of this unadulterated horseshit green clean energy, which is every bit as, as much of an unsustainable, human-centric, ecocidal attack on this planet as fossil fuels. Uh, a sustainable energy and economic future for all. Yeah, right, please. Let's change that word to unsustainable. OPEC's view dovetails with that of the president of the upcoming Cop Out 28 climate talk, Sultan Al Jaber of OPEC memory country, United Arab Emirates. Uh, he said on Sunday, you know, which got all the little greenies panties in a wad, uh, the Sultan said on Sunday, quote, we cannot unplug the energy system of today before we build the new system of tomorrow. Uh, I agree 100% with that fox guarding the hen house. Ain't gonna happen. Al Jaber believes that the world needs to start with a tripling of renewable energy production before beginning the transition away from fossil fuels. Uh, OPEC, meanwhile, noted that while advanced nations have set targets for expanding renewable and nuclear power to meet their energy security and sustainability goals. Quote, these ambitious targets increasingly stand at odds with realities on the ground. Uh, it said the required investments to achieve, you know, the sustainability targets, quote, are significantly lagging. Uh, so OPAC elaborated that it had two additional forecast scenarios. One, it, one assumes fast expansions, expansion of renewables, which sees global oil demand roughly stabilizing at its current level, about, you know, call it 100 million barrels a day, for the next decade before beginning a slow decline. The other scenario, the third scenario, sees countries putting a priority on their economic growth, leading the pack being India, which results in an increase in global oil demand of 6.3 million barrels per day on top of the reference scenario, which, what was that, 116? Uh, yeah, so, there's, so their other scenario is actually showing 122.3 million barrels per day of oil being burned in 2025, being led by uh, India. <clears throat> OPEC also backed developing technological solutions uh -huh, to reduce emissions such as carbon capture and storage. While the possibility of removing carbon from emissions appeals to the industry, 
appeals to the fossil fuel industry, obviously. The technology is far from maturity. <laughs> Do you think so? But anyway, it's going to be fun. I'm really going to enjoy all of these little lefty greenies uh, just, just going on this screaming meltdown uh, about having a fossil fuel executive uh, in charge of Cop Out 28. I, I mean, there, there, <laughs> there's so many layers of delicious dark doomer irony. You know, I, I mean, it's, it's like putting Sancho Panza uh, in, in charge of a chipmunk protection uh, society meeting. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I mean, it, you know, on one hand, I agree with these greenies. It's absolutely just rubbing our faces in it, uh, how uh, these planet eaters uh, have are, are, are approaching the, this whole issue of uh, greenhouse gas emissions. But on the other hand, the guy is right. It ain't gonna happen. We are not going just to just stop oil. Uh, ain't gonna happen. We are doomed. It makes no difference what path we go down, guys. So you might as well get out there and enjoy the ride to your doom. Uh, whether it's in your fossil fuel powered truck or your little uh, electric vehicle uh, riding you into your doom. But I gotta wrap this up and get ready for my uh, Human Supremacy Day vacation tourist coming to sit here and shiver in the uh, cold winter of early October while they still can. I am off to Vermont tomorrow, be gone for three days. As I say, probably won't be a chronicle tomorrow or Wednesday. I will try to remember to do my human supremacy uh, day rant on Thursday on October 12th, driving my gas-sucking truck back from Vermont. Bye, guys. All right, little dog. You need to go get some chippies.